Good morning, my audience. Thanks for coming to Dr. Chao's YouTube channel. In this channel, I'm interviewing HCPSS graduates. I want them to share their experience and give some advice to high, our high school students. I hope this program will be the channel you can learn and you can share. And today, we are welcoming Mr. Hunter Craig, who graduated from Redford High School and will join Howard Community College this fall. He will major in social and political science. Okay, welcome, Mr. Craig. Hi there, Dr. Wu, thank you for having me. So can you have a self-introduction? Yeah, absolutely. So hi everyone, my name is Hunter. I'm a proud K through 12 product of the Howard County Public School System. And like Dr. Wu said, a recent graduate of Reservoir High School. Uh, so I have been to uh, Cradle Rock Elementary School. I went to two middle schools, Lake Elkhorn Middle and Murray Hill Middle, and then I went to Reservoir. So I feel that I have a lot of uh, diverse experience in different communities, going to different schools uh, in different areas of the county. And uh, I feel like that I have different knowledge that not the everyday student can bring, you know, that hasn't uh, shifted schools in the middle of, uh, in the middle of their schooling career. So I'm glad to be here and I'm uh, very excited to answer some of these questions. Thank you, uh, Hunter. I, I think the, you are a product of Howard County and a product of the Howard County Public School System. I definitely believe your experience will help our incoming high school students. So my first question for you, what was your biggest challenge in your senior year? How did you overcome that? Yeah, so my biggest challenge in my senior year was definitely the COVID-19 pandemic and the abrupt disruption that it had on my senior year. So I know that Maryland closed their schools on March 12th, I believe. And I remember that that week at school, uh, there were a lot of things going on. I know that there were some tests and quizzes coming up uh, for me. Uh, and then we were also preparing for our state speech and debate tournament, which was the, just the following weekend. Uh, and I was also preparing to testify before the Board of Education like that Thursday, uh, and then the Board of Ed canceled. So, you know, there were just a lot of important things going on. And of course, there was really no way for us to counter it because, you know, we were all in this together. But uh, the way that I tried to get my mind off of it was to reach out to old teachers, that, to former teachers that I had, and send, you th send them thank you letters for, you know, having a real impact on my schooling career. Uh, I think I sent out some like 15, 16 letter, thank you letters. Uh, to That's teacher, a lot. Yeah, to teachers, uh, Cradle Rock, Lake Elkhorn, uh, Murray Hill, and of course, Reservoir. Um, and then in May, I worked with our school psychologist at Reservoir while I was still a student uh, in the, involved in the Active Minds chapter. I'll probably talk a little bit more about this later. Uh, but we, I worked with my school psychologist and we uh, worked to deliver mental health resources uh, to students who might have been struggling at home, coping with the, you know, the unprecedented situation that we were in. Uh, this was also just recently after the death of George Floyd, so there was a social unrest going on. And, you know, we brought a comfortable, uh, we, we brought students a comfortable space to talk about these uncomfortable conversations. Uh, and I think that that really had an impact on, you know, some of the students that, that wanted to talk to somebody, talk to some other students that they go to school with, talk to a teacher, and, you know, really explain how they feel during this time. So those Thank were some you. of the things mm -hmm. that we did during the quarantine while the school year, that I did during the quarantine when the school year was still going on. And I hope to continue doing those types of things, uh, you know, moving forward, going into HCC. Hunter, thank you very much. I believe this kind of effort is so important during this time, both mm -hmm. because of a pan pandemic and the racial discussion in this country, right? I think, it, I really believe your effort it's really benefited the community and our students and the population very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So when you look back in your four four year high school life, mm -hmm. what what do you think is your biggest challenge, and how did you overcome that? Yeah. So I would say that it was really just you know fitting in and like finding my place in the high school setting. Uh, 
like I said, Reservoir was isn't actually my districted school. Uh, I only went there because uh, certain resources are offered there that my home school is not. I'm supposed to go to Oakland Mills, but I went to Reservoir. So, you know, in my freshman year, <clears throat> not only did I not know many people, uh, but I also didn't know what I wanted to get involved in, you know, what I wanted students to know me for. Uh, and I was going back and forth whether I should do sports or something more along the lines of academia. Uh, and I remember asking around and sitting in, in some, uh, sitting in, in some meetings, uh, you know, but nothing that, nothing really stood out like speech and debate did. And it's just been an amazing experience being on the RHS speech and debate team. Uh, even though I grabbed onto speech and debate fairly quick though, uh, it still took me a while for people to get to know me in my grade as a student leader, right? Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I was a sophomore, <clears throat> I began to compete in local debate tournaments and I got involved into student government. Uh, and really from there, I just built on that, right? So mm -hmm. I got involved in the 2018 Board of Ed race, which is when I met you. Uh, I testified before the Board of Ed multiple times, joined the Howard County Association of Student Councils, which I highly suggest students who are interested in student government and student leadership to get involved in. Uh, and you know, pretty much by the end of my junior year, students knew, saw me as that student leader because you know I posted about it on my social media or I always talked about it you know they were like oh okay what current event is Hunter gonna bring up today in class you know uh, so yeah I've always been involved in government politics current events going on uh, so you know maneuvering figuring out how I was gonna bring that into the high school setting myself you know, by myself uh, was really my biggest challenge uh, and, you know, and the way that I went about that was by, you know, joining some smaller clubs like speech and debate uh, and then, you know, moving up towards into the county level SGA, HCASC, uh, and then collaborating with local elected officials like uh, school board member Dr. Wu. I see. Thank you. I think your point is to try to start from something small, then try mm -hmm. to explore your interest and find the, your position in clubs and the community and eventually you, you are set down something you are passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just find your niche when you go out there, when you take that first step. Uh, you know, you just have to be confident in yourself. You know, really think, you know, am I doing this because I'm trying to make myself look good on paper? Or am I doing this because I like to do it? And whatever comes about it on a resume point is an undesired benefit. You know, so that's how I, that's how I look at it. I like to, all the things that I do isn't because of, you know, some college resume point or because of, I want, you know, I want people to look at, you know, look at me a certain way. I do it because I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And I really care about a lot of the well-being in our student body mm -hmm. and, you know, helping students that, you know, might be struggling to find their way through high school. I see. I think that definitely speaks of your experience and your character. I know you for a long time now, I would say. <laughs> I really appreciate what you did for our children, for our students. Okay, I think you covered some of that. Then maybe you can expand. So which kind of extra curriculum activity you feel is so important in your high school life and you want to share with other people? Yeah, so uh, like I said, I was a part of the Howard County Association of Student Councils for two years to be exact. Uh, and one of those years I sat on the State Legislative Affairs Committee. Uh, while a part of HCAST, I was a, an applicant for the student member of the board position. So I had a wonderful experience running for the SMOB, uh, getting to meet other students across the county at the SMOB convention, meeting with delegates, talking to them and hearing what students around the county uh, have to say about the issues that affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then uh, on the State Legislative Affairs Committee, I collaborated with local elected officials and uh, got to organize a general assembly back in December of 2019, where uh, I was so fortunate to have Dr. Wu come out representing the Board of Education, uh, along with county council members and state legislators. We were able to invite local elected officials to come meet and talk to students uh, and, you know, explain to them how to get involved in government, some of the things that affect them uh, at the state level, at the county level, and at the Board of Education, of course. Uh, and then I've also testified before the Board of Education for about 
five times, uh, math graduation requirements, special eds, expanding speech and debate, and, and expanding mental health resources. Uh, again, all these things that I feel are really important in the county, uh, things that a lot of people might not uh, realize, you know, is really necessary going on right now, like mental health. Um, <clears throat> and then I've also sat on numerous policy review and advisory committees for HCPSS. Uh, I've sat on donations and fundraising, the donations and fundraising policy review committee, uh, student code of conduct, and the diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory committee, uh, along with Superintendent Martirano's special ed advisory committee. Uh, and then for the past year, I was the student member of the Howard County Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Commission. And on the, on the MLK Holiday Commission, we organize and celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, organize events surrounded around uh, his birth date in January, uh, and just, you know, try to preach the word of Dr. Dr. King. I see. Uh, so. That's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And then in my spare time, when it's an election year, of course, I, uh, I try to campaign for school board members. Uh, I've been doing that since 2016. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fun experience going out there talking to, you know, voters and really, uh, you know, getting a feel for how the county is feeling about the Board of Education, about, you know, the school system and getting to meet, you know, the candidates who will sit on the board one day, sure. uh, themselves, which is cool. I'm looking forward to one day you are running for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so if you think about think about like a, like a, on the state level and the mm -hmm. county level and the school level, like pick a one policy you have or one bill you have a lot of impression and you still think about that. Yeah. So. I think right, right now, I feel that it is crucial to have student voice heard. And that's why when I was on the State Legislative Affairs Committee, I worked to write a student demonstration policy, actually, with uh, some other students. <clears throat> I think right now, HCPSS doesn't have a uh, specific outlined uh, way, ways about students, how students can uh, you know, freely express themselves through their First Amendment rights. Uh, from peacefully protesting to, you know, just having a march, having an assembly led by students. So I've really been an advocate uh, for the past couple months, you know, pushing the student voice, student demonstration side of things. Uh, I also think it's really important to focus on mental health and special education. Uh, I think that the that you know, special education students are our most most vulnerable. I myself am a, was a was a is a special education student. I had an I have an IEP, uh, so you know I think we need to make sure that you know our students who are you know who ha who seek these types of resources are you know being cared for and there's prop adequate resources uh, given to them and they don't really have to find it on their own. Uh, I see. And that mental health resources, of course, everyone goes through challenges, especially in middle school and high school. So a mo more of an emphasis on that. And uh, you know, I think it would have a much larger impact on the student com com community, uh, and it brings a more inclusive environment in the high school settings, in the middle school settings, and makes students more accepting, accepting of one another, which I think is crucial at this moment in our history where you know we might seem very divided, but we need to bring ourselves together and be more civil. I see. I see. Thank you. I I, I totally agree with you. I think. In the local level, we probably not as divided in the national level. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, the national level is just so divided and sometimes just so difficult to consolidate different ideas. And unfortunately, yes. I hope yeah. that it will change soon. And uh, so do you have any advice for incoming high school students? Yeah, so, you know, I would say just go for it, you know. Every student has a passion, has a desire, and every student brings a, not, not just a unique experience, but a unique voice to whatever table it be, right? Whether it's the robotics club, whether it's the math club, whether it's science Olympiad, whether it's uh, the, the comedian club, whether it's the drama club, the band department, you know, 
every student brings that unique perspective, that unique per experience, and that unique uh, just voice to the table. And I think that whatever you want, whatever you know, whatever you want to do, whatever you have a passion in, whether it be you know sports or a club or a team, go for it go for it no matter what you you know whatever whatever anxiety you might feel or might arise from you know oh well i don't know how students are going to feel about me i don't know how teachers are going to feel about me if i join this club don't worry about it because the the clubs and the teams in high school have such a family type um you know connection and i think that you know whatever you do it's going to give you an amazing, it's going to give you an amazing experience. You're going to get friends out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just overall going to be, you know, one of the best decisions that you make. I know that I kick myself every day for not going to, not starting debate tournament, not going to debate tournaments in my freshman year. Like I said, I started in my sophomore year. Uh, because then if I started in my freshman year, I might have gotten to know more students uh, debated more students from across the county uh, and, you know, got to know more students on my team better. But really just, you know, put yourself out there. Don't be worried about what others think uh, because, they, they, you know, they're not going to judge you. I, you know, I, I promise you that if you bring yourself to the table and you clearly show that you have a clear passion and dedication for whatever subject it be, whether it's, you know, student leadership or if it's something with the arts or something more STEM-like, you know, you're going to be accepted and you're going to be a strong asset to the team. I see. So basically just do it, right? <laughs> do it. Yeah, just do it. Yep. Okay. So can you talk about uh, the college life you, you're expecting? You are choosing Howard Community College, right? And can you talk about why you choose like HCC, which kind of major, and what's your expectation for your future career? Yeah, so I chose HCC for two reasons. One, I wanted to stay involved in local government, you know, the Board of Education. I wanted to stay in Howard County uh, and really stay involved in everything that's going on. Uh, I also did it to save money, of course, and really I feel that it's a, you know, it, College is a stepping stone. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a slow, I, I want to slowly adjust to the college experience because that's how I function, you know, just as a person. I don't like to take things too quickly. I don't want to place myself in a college or university that's out of state that might, uh, that I might not like, or even a college or university in state that I might not like. I don't want to go right into the deep end you know what i mean i want to take baby steps uh, i want to start in the shallow end and then make my way through make my way slowly throughout college and you know i'm not really all about the whole college experience with getting the dorm and being out of state or being out of town and you know getting into the fraternities or whatnot i like my little community of Howard County. So I wanted to stay here as long as possible. Uh, so I think HCC is a great opportunity. You know, we have one of the best community colleges in the nation and, you know, that's we true. should take mm -hmm. advantage of that. So I, so that, that's been my focus for all of high school. I knew that I wanted to start there regardless of what my GPA grades courses I take are. So I, I wanted see. to start there and then transfer to in state university. So, you know, English and history is really my thing. Uh, but when it comes to what I want to do in life, uh, you know, politics, law, speech and debate, that's really what I want to go into. So, you know, I hope to go, I hope to go into law school as well in state. Um, I'd like to, again, stay, you know, stay as local and involved as possible. That's great. And I really appreciate it. You have a enjoyable life in HCC and have a smooth transition to law schools or some other university in two years. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you have any advice and for HCC, PSS, where they can improve or change? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think that HCPSS is taking the right steps to address the needs of students uh, and teachers by ensuring a safe learning environment going into the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, you know, it's better to be safe than to risk the well-being of both our students and staff. Uh, 
but I'm also thrilled uh, to see students in HCPSS, you know, utilizing their First Amendment rights by speaking up uh, against some of the injustices that they're witnessing or that they've experienced themselves in Howard County. I would like to see Howard County take more adequate action to racial bias incidents that occur on HCPSS property. Uh, you know, I feel that, I feel that students have been underheard when it comes to these reports and there's so many that go unnoticed. I just feel that Howard County, that the Howard County Public School System can do a better job listening to those voices and believing those voices. So I think they're taking the right steps. The establishment of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office is very, very important and it's a great first step. Uh, but we need to, you know, I think we need to look into uh, better training our staff when it comes to uh, racial bias training or diversity training. Uh, I think that our special education, that our special education department also needs <clears throat> more funding, more resources. I think that we need to ensure the best training for our staff, paraeducators including. I think our county is taking, is miles ahead where they were five, 10 years ago. I just think if we're going to be one of the best school systems in the state, one of the best school systems in the country, you know, there's of course going to be things that we can improve upon. And although we're better than 90% of the country, you know, I think that there are still some areas that we need to work on. Uh, thank, and thank you. I'd like to, and I think we're taking those right steps. Uh, thank you, Hunter. I, I, I think I totally agree with you. And yeah. um, we have a, still a long way to go at the same time. I think we just need to keep an eye on everything we're doing including diversity, inclusion, and um, culture, curriculum, and the special education. Anywhere, if we see something wrong, we should aware, raise the awareness and mm -hmm. make a change, make improvement. I think mm -hmm. if we consistently have that kind of mindset, and mm -hmm. definitely will be, will be better and better. Yes. Okay, so do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, actually, um, one thing that I'd like to say is stay optimistic. And I say stay optimistic because whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, you know, I think that there are, looking at 2020, you might not say that this is the most desired year, right? <laughs> to say, but, but you can also look at it and say, this is a teachable moment in our history, in our current affairs, that what we're seeing right now is unprecedented, but it might be an awakening going into the next, going forward into the next 10 years. And, you know, we're going to see a very different society one year, two year, three years from now. And so whether we're looking at it nationally, globally, or just locally in Howard County, stay optimistic about the future. I see that we have great potential coming out of the school system, coming up uh, with the uh, upcoming elections and with just a lot of the movements that are going on right now that we see on the news. Uh, and though it looks bad right now, I have faith that there's gonna be a lot of change that comes out of this. Now, however, however you see that, you know, I'll leave that up to your interpretation, but I feel that you know, I feel very strongly that with passionate, passionate young people, with a changing culture, with a more emphasis on mental health awareness and racial bias and things like that locally, uh, which are also coming together nationally, I feel optimistic about our future, both in Howard County, in Maryland, and in the United States, that, you know, we're going to get through this, of course, and that we are able to overcome anything. That's just what America does. Uh, but for the students in Howard County, I want to say just do it. If you have a passion, if you like what you do, go for it. Whether that's, you know, something in the arts, whether that's something in STEM, get involved. It's the most important thing. I know it might sound cliche, but build those connections. When you build those connections, more opportunities will open up. And with those opportunities will be 
what I like to say, unlimited possibilities. It's Reservoir's motto. So I'm going to token that for a moment and say, moment and say that it'll unlock unlimited possibilities. Okay. Thank you. I, I agree with you. I think stay positive is important in this pandemic and uh, with so many uncertainties. The sky yeah. will not fall, right? <laughs> no, yeah, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for our audience tuning into this YouTube channel. I really appreciate you listening. And uh, if you are children or yourself interested in to be interviewed, please contact me. I really hope our student voice and the student experience would help our future students and inspire our future generations to be better and to do good things for the community. And thank you very much, Hunter, for your time. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye-bye.